Hey guys, thanks for tuning back in. This is Eric KJ4YZI. And I'm going to make a video of my new ham radio go bag. You may have seen I did a little video on the bag that I'm using, the Core Surf dry bag, completely waterproof 40 liter dry bag, which I thought was the best option for my go kit. But the go kit's inside, all right? But I'm using this to carry it. It does have the, you know, the, the it's a backpack, okay? Makes it a little more uh, easier to carry and keep everything dry. Now inside, I just have some random old bag that I got from my previous job, somebody was throwing it away, they didn't want it. So I figured I'd grab it and put all the stuff in there. So I have some stuff in the bag and stuff in the bag, inside the bag. But you know, what are you really gonna do? Okay, so I'm a ham radio operator. What I normally tell people, well I have, you know, if when all else goes down, I have ways to communicate. I can sustain communication. Really? Well big deal, I'm a ham operator and what am I actually going to do out in the field? What's gonna be in my repertoire here to sustain communication out in the field. Now, there's a couple things in here that are new that I'll make videos on separately so you can see uh, how they work and what they are, but when you see me out in the field, you'll at least know what's in my bag here and uh, you know what I chose to put in there and, and how I could sustain communications practically all day long uh, with this and what kind of stuff I have in here. So. Let's get into what's inside my bag. Ham Radio Concepts. place to come for amateur radio videos. So it's really not that easy to get <laughs> the bag inside out of the bag, okay? But let's see if I can get it out of here. So as I showed in the other video, see that rolling up there, that makes it waterproof. I think it's just a really good thing to have me uh, being out in the field. So in, okay, to start what I have, I'm going to take this stuff out and show you, okay? Because it's in there pretty good. But I do have slid in here for now. I do have uh, a laptop, okay? And the laptop is, and I'll show you about that. It's a beater. It's an old uh, Windows 7 machine. It's like a touch screen, turns into a tablet, but the reason for that. Now, if I can get this out of here, there it goes. Okay. If I'm going to be somewhere where I'm not really getting wet, I really probably don't need that big bag. It makes it easier. Now, this is a, a bag from a test set that, like I said, at my previous job. No, uh, no real, you know, you're not going online really to buy it. It's just something I found. You may have a bag of your own or you might just toss the stuff in that bag, whatever. So inside here, let me show you what I got. I'm try to do this. Uh, I don't know how if there's any organization to this video or not. I'm just kind of, you know, doing a little blog type lately. I hope you guys are at least appreciative of it. Keep yourselves watching something. So give me a thumbs up just for the effort. I don't care if you like the material. Give me a thumbs up for effort. Okay, so one thing that I really like to have in my kit is this little tuner. This is an MFJ QRP pocket tuner. And this little tuner right here will tune up to 100 watts, okay? And uh, I could bypass if I have a resonant antenna. But it's got BNCs on it, and I have my, uh, you know, tuning here, inductors, and it, it's really compact. A lot of guys use auto tuners like LDG and stuff, and that's fine. If you have the power suitable enough to run it for a constant, you could do that, you know. Um, but I, I wanted to be as basic as possible. So a little tuner like this, this thing works great when I need it. I don't always need this, but it works. So how would I power my kit? And I'm going to show you a video exclusively on this because something that I finally did the leap for. If you remember the old video I had, 
I had an old lead acid battery and, and everybody was laughing like, man, there's so many better options now. What the hell are you doing with that old battery? Well, it's cheap, but what I have now, I did get the BioNO Power. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery. And this is the 12 volt, 12 amp hour, but believe it, this video, this battery here will run a long time. So we're gonna check out the video on that. They've been around for a little while now and BioNO uh, makes some really good batteries. John's got one too, he's got the bigger one. But I chose this thinking this was gonna be just plenty enough where I could fit it in my kit. Without being too big, they do make bigger ones, but this one will work just fine for what I need. Um, as far as my radio, so I chose instead of right now using the uh, Zygu X5105 QRP, which I had it at my last outing, I chose to, you know, I bought this for the vehicle for uh, HF Mobile and I never used it really mobile. I bought this used. This is an ICOM 706. It does have two meters on it, only at 10 watts, but um, a full 100 watt HF and six meter rig and two meters. So great to have this. A um, little older, but definitely uh, works just fine. And I can dial this down. If I really want to play QRP, I could dial this down to five or 10 watts and do it that way. No problem. All right. So I'm going to power that ICOM with that bio in it. Okay. How would I keep that bio bioeno charged? How would I keep power coming in so I have extended run times? Now this is something I picked up on Amazon and the link is in the description. Although I didn't realize bioeno sold these too. So maybe I'm gonna get the bigger one from bioeno. But this right here is probably an off brand. This is a fold up solar panel that I got on Amazon. I think I paid 38, $42, something like that, $47. But this thing is really cool. Look at this. Fold up solar panel. Now this is claimed to be 21 watts and I think the BioNO one that I want is 40 something watts. I'm gonna end up getting that. But if you're really, you know, the reason I got this, it did come with all kinds of connectors in here for powering things. And you can see here that it has a USB output as well as a full uh, 12 volt output which had alligator clips and I'm not using that uh, alligator clips if you had a lead acid battery you can trickle charge it right on there but um, so anyways this is a charge or a solar controller as it is I don't know the actual um, you know let me show you what I what I'm going to use with this um, but anyways this can keep my power going uh, it won't power the rig by itself uh, it's not going to power too much. I think it's like a half an amp output, but it did come with um, in this little pocket I have here. It came with a couple cords. It came with uh, you know my little all kinds of different DC power jacks, which one fits in a laptop, just doesn't have enough power to to power the laptop exclusively on solar. Now the BioNO version apparently does. You can plug it right into a laptop with that. So using something like this is best recommended with a charge controller. Now I did pick this up from BioNO and the reason I did was because they have a bunch of them on eBay and Amazon but you have to get one that is capable of uh, charging lithium iron phosphate. Got sand all over it from my last trip. I brought it out with me, never used it. But you have to have one that is for, right here, for use with lithium iron phosphate batteries only. There's a reason because of the, the LIFO, LIFPO batteries, they have chips in them and they balance, you have to balance the cells and all that. So this right here, I'm gonna output the solar panel, the 12 volt, or it's actually 18 volt open circuit, output into the uh, solar panel here and then output here to the battery, okay? So solar charge controller, be careful of which one you buy. If you get a cheap one on Amazon or eBay for a lead acid, fine. If you want to get the one to charge your BioNO, get the BioNO uh, compatible charger so they support it, okay? So that solar panel with the, with the battery and the solar charge controller is going to keep me some power for quite a long time. The battery by itself is going to keep me running for quite a long time. And the cool thing about that with the USB output, that it will charge my tablet too. Now, why do I have a tablet and a laptop in here? That's a good question. 
you may be thinking, well, if you're out in the field and you're, you know, you're bugging out, you ain't gonna use a tablet, you're not gonna use a laptop, you don't need one, it's power hogging, whatever. Okay. The reason I have this is because there's something I want to show you in a future video, which is in this little black bag. In the black bag is called the Wolfie Link. Now you may be familiar with a Wolfie Link. The Wolfie Link allows me to connect that tablet to my 706 or my X5105 with the appropriate cables that they make and sell uh, to so I can connect my tablet to my radio. I can do PSK, I can do weather facts, uh, image downloading, I can do uh, RTTY with my tablet. The tablet's plugged directly into the solar panel and this Wolfie Link connects this, the, uh, the uh, tablet to the ICOM 706. So I have the right cable for this here, that's for the 706 and the Wolfie Link and there's a cable that goes from the Wolfie Link to the tablet here. So more, there'll be a video on this if you're not familiar, but that, see that's the reason I could really do digital communications or uh, decoding, you know, weather facts, stuff like that. If you're way out in the middle of nowhere, you can, that'll be a video coming up, weather facts. You can see how to download weather images from uh, uh, NOAA, uh, whoever puts them out really, um, on your tablet. And you can, you know, with the tablet being charged by solar all day, plus the battery in the tablet, you can run literally for days and days and days. So the Wolfie Link allows me not to have a full-blown computer running to run PSK or RTTY. That's why I have that. So there's a video coming up on that. As far as antennas, now, <laughs> okay, so also here is a little roll-up Bluetooth battery powered keyboard, which would also charge on that solar panel with the five volt charger. And this was, I got this on eBay as well. It rolls up, it's pretty cheap, 15 bucks I think for a keyboard. That way I don't have to use the keyboard on the screen on the tablet. I could set this thing up, roll out the keyboard and really get going on PSK and RTTY. So, um, okay, as far as antennas, what do I have for antennas? Well. Is there anything else in here before I keep going? Yes. Okay. Uh, antennas. Well, I have a lot of these MFJ ham sticks. I have a 15 meter, I haven't even used this one yet, 80 meter, 20 meter, the MFJ 1899T with the top section, the 30 meter, and the 40 meter. These are great because I can use them right on the back of my radio no tuner required if I wanted to run up to 25 watts. Um, They're designed for the 817 and the KX3 and many others. You can really use them a lot. And I have a video on these already because if I wanted to set up just a, a quick antenna, I don't have any trees, okay? You gotta think, maybe you're gonna be somewhere where you don't have a tree to set up a long wire or you don't have a tripod because a tripod don't fit in here. You can pop out one of these antennas uh, use your counterpoise wire on your radio. I always have some wire here, uh, which I need to get more. I want to get thinner wire, but longer wire, so I can run up to 80 meters. But uh, I'll show you about this in a minute. So these are great. You know, a little right angle VNC, which is in this bag here. Um, right angle SO239 to VNC. I can put this right on the back of my radio, okay? That's why I have the hand sticks. I like these. These things work really well. I've had good luck with them. Now, if you want to go a little better on antennas, so here's one I did a video on years ago. This is not years ago, probably last year. This is the uh, Tim Ortiz. He was making these on eBay. I think he still is. I haven't talked to him in a long time. But these things were pretty much a success. And I had this set up out there at uh, River Ranch last week. I can't believe that phone's dinging this whole time too. I can't get a break, man. I just can't. Phone's going off, train's going by. This is real. So um, I have the Tim Ortiz, this is the 20 meter antenna. This is a stealth antenna, quick to set up, real easy. Goes right back in the little bag here. Um, you know, so it's, it's a convenient, lightweight antenna to have with you. You want something a little bit longer? Okay. How about, I don't have that one. How about this, which 
There's a story behind this. It's, everything still has sand in it from my little video out there at River Ranch. I never really cleaned anything off. This is the MFJ 1982 LP. And this is uh, a long uh, N-fed. I think it's 135 feet long. Uh, half wave, 80 through 10 meters. This is the lower pow low power version. This will handle up to 30 watts. That's based on the transformer in here with overheating. But they have the higher power. Now originally I got this for a QRP, but I can run it at 30 watts and make plenty of contacts. I don't have to do 100 watts. Um, but my tuner will handle 100 watts. So this requires a tuner on some bands and not on the other. And what I found about this, because I have to make another video on this, because I found that, you, you of course, I did have a wire on this for like a counterpoise last time, and I was tuning the hell out of it to get it to work. But I didn't realize, if you look at this counterpoise wire, I have the end stripped off because this thing has to go right to, we put it in a little ground rod. Once I put it in a ground, uh, in the ground on a ground rod, the thing came to life. I didn't need a tuner on like five of the six of the bands. Uh, only a couple times, a couple bands I needed a tuner for it. So you have to earth ground this thing, not just lay a wire out. Uh, only 15 or 20 feet, but it's got to go right in the ground. So I'll make a video on that too. Um, another update. And also, look at this. I have my two meter portable roll up J pole. Now, I got this from Gigaparts, and I guess KC0ZEQ makes this. I asked them at Gigaparts, they said, What's the smallest uh, two meter antenna that you have that's the most portable? I didn't want some great big thing here. This I actually set up out there and didn't get it on video. This is a roll up J pole. Now, I'm not sure really about how this compares to a regular J-Pole, but it does sufficient enough in the field as a lightweight antenna. And what did I hook this to? It's got an SMA connector on it. What did I hook this to? I hooked that to my Yesu FT2DR. And why did I bring this? Well, it's always good to have VHF with you if you're in a bag. You know, um, I do have VHF on the 706. I could use that antenna with an adapter at low power on my 706, but with this, I was actually using this on APRS and almost successful where I was at sending email over two meter packet. And I've showed videos on that before. I actually used this right here. This is the mobile link, mobile linked Bluetooth TNC. Battery power, this thing will run like literally three or four days. Bluetooth, it's very, very power efficient. This could also charge directly off that solar panel and run for endless amount of hours. The only thing I couldn't charge would be this. I'll have to come up with a solution on that. I have a solution. I want to bring something like this, an inverter, but this one's a little too big. This is 400 watts. I'm going to get a little 150 watt cigarette lighter inverter to use with that battery and solar panel so I could charge stuff like that. So we're going to leave that out for now. But I have the cable actually, which I got from Mobile Link, and this actually is for the FT2DR. Another video coming up, how to use the FT2DR on packet because it doesn't have a TNC in the 2DR. That's a lot of people that ask, does it have a TNC inside? Really? No. But this right here turns it into a full packet rig. And I guess Mobile Link one time told me, hey, we saw you made a video on this. We're not making these for packet, but I ended up doing it anyway. So please be mindful to you know, not send them troubleshooting or support emails because they're supporting this for APRS. Um, not really packet. It may work for packet, but you know, your, your results may vary and you have to do a little bit of setup. But video on that with the FT2DR. So right there in the bag, and that's pretty much everything for now. Uh, I do have, like I said, the laptop. The reason I have this old laptop, it was cheap. I bought it at Orlando Hamfest for 10 bucks. Didn't have a hard drive, didn't have a battery, didn't have a charger. All said and done, I'm finding parts, 50 bucks. It is a, um, at one of the original uh, tablet type computers, right? So it turns into that, and then I have my little pen so I can write on it. I could use it as a notepad for logging, but really I want to use this for uh, VHF, I'm sorry, HF email, WinLink. Also, if I really want to do some other digital modes like Olivia and Contestia and stuff, right now there's no app for that. So I, I need this to do Contestia, Hellschreiber, Olivia, stuff like that. And then I could use my tablet just for RTTY and uh, PSK. 
So um, th that's why I want to get the inverter so I can run all this, you know, uh, battery in this plus a charger. So really not uh, ex really uh, uh, extremely necessary for a laptop, but I figured I could fit it in there. I always carry some cab uh, coax cables, you know, one to go to the tuner, one to go from the tuner to the radio or to the antenna. And I have a, another longer one. I want to get some thin coax that's long so it'll fit. I don't want this big bulky stuff in there. But for now, that's what's in my go kit. Um, you know, a lot of stuff. You may say, man, that's a lot, Eric. You really don't need all that crap, you know. Uh, you may not need a big radio. You may not need to. That's what I want to, you know. And again, here's a, like I said, this is a great radio that I had last time. This is my little uh, X5105, which has a battery and tuner built in. And I could use this. But sometimes, you know, you just want a little more than five watts. So, you know. I'll, I'll put this away for a minute and then I'll, maybe I'll make two kits. Maybe I'll make one just for QRP and I'll make one for HF uh, portable. We'll call this HF portable bag, you know? But let me know what you think of this. And again, now I can do videos on um, the Wolfie Link, on the bio and the battery and stuff in case you're interested so you can see for your go kit what you want to buy. Uh, a little bit more details on those. So um, thanks for watching. Leave a comment below. Again, thumbs up even if you hate the video. Give me a thumbs up for coming home from work, taking my shoes off, and making a video for you guys. Because uh, you guys are my biggest fans. So, 7-3 everyone, let me know. And uh, more videos coming up as I get a real schedule ironed out so we know exactly when videos are posted. 7-3, KJ4, YZI.